Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at the new Thermaltake Tough Power SFX 1000 Watt Fully Modular PCI Express Gen 5.1, ATX 3.1, and SFX 4.1 compatible Platinum PSU. And it's not much bigger than a Coke can. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we'll be taking a look at this. This is the Thermaltake Tough Power SFX. This is the 1000 watt version. This is the new updated version. There's actually three models available. So if a 1000 watts is probably a little bit more than you need, then there is actually a 750 and an 850. And of course, the 1000 watt, if you want to, all of which are fully modular, all of which support PCI Express Gen 5.1. So that is going to be the new generation of graphics cards. So that is using the 12 volt high power, the six times two, rather than the 12 plus four. Basically it looks the same. It's just wired slightly differently, but this is the new specification. Awesome. If you've got a 4090 graphics card or possibly depending when you're watching this, a 5080, 5090, something along those lines of which this surprisingly, despite its very minuscule dimensions should power it very easily. This is absolutely tiny. And I, I'm still not entirely sure how they've managed to make this platinum rated. So up to kind of 95% efficient, very quiet, and this small is nuts. So this comes in at a tiny 125 mil by 64 mil by 104 mil. Yes, it's absolutely tiny. And as you've probably seen from the B-roll, it's basically about the same size as a can of Coke. It's absolutely tiny, but don't worry. If maybe you've got one of those cases where it is an ITX type case, but it doesn't take an SFX power supply. Don't worry, Thermaltake have included a ATX adapter. So if you want to use this in an ATX case, then you certainly can do. So on today's video, we're going to go through, take a quick look at this, uh, go through some of the specifications, and then you can work out whether or not this is going to be suitable for your next ITX build, which I'm guessing you're probably going to want to use it for an ITX or for some extremely small form factor project. Yeah, it's absolutely nuts, absolutely tiny. Anyway, let's take a look at the packaging. So on the packaging, as you can see, Thermaltake Tough Power SFX 1000 watt, platinum rated, 80 plus platinum, fully modular, as you've uh, probably kind of worked out already, supports PCI Express, the 12 volt 2x6, also ATX 3.1, as we said, which is the new emerging specification, also has a smart zero fan, doesn't mean there isn't one, it just means there is one, but it doesn't run unless the system is around about 30% of its total power, so in this instance for the 1000 watt, if your system's using less than 300 watts, then the fan won't spin. Now, I have actually noticed they've added a nice little feature to this, which isn't always on a lot of power supplies, especially the ones with the uh, zero fan technology. When you first turn this on, the fan does spin very briefly, like a, a second, maybe two seconds, just so you know it's actually working, which is awesome. Now, of course, if you want to know if it's working, you can, if you want to, get hold of the new Dr. Power 3 from Thermaltake, their power supply tester, actually very handy. And in this instance, I've managed to confirm that the power on good signal is well within the rated specs on the box. So there's that. Other nice features of this. So we've got 100% complete Japanese 105C caps, of which the ones which I could actually see inside are made by Rubicon. And if you know anything about power supplies and capacitors for that matter, you'll know that Rubicon are pretty much one of the premium range of caps on the market. Uh, yeah, basically if you're into audio, high-end audio stuff, chances are you'll have used Rubicon caps. Another cool thing as well, depending how fast technology moves, which at the moment it seems to be moving a little bit slow, but this does actually come with a seven year warranty. So depending on what you're pairing this with, then you're gonna be good for at least seven years. They have got a full worldwide seven year warranty. On the back of the box, it goes over some of the key features. Also, I won't elaborate on those too much, but I'll give you some close-ups. Also, it shows you the efficiency curves there, which are with either 230 volts or with uh, 115 or 110s. So obviously, if you're in Europe or in the UK, I think also Australia, because we've got higher voltage, then you get slightly better efficiency. Also, this has got extremely low ripple noise design. So uh, under 30 millivolts, which seems to be good from what I've seen from other power supplies. They all try to aim for around that sort of area. Also, we've got extremely strict voltage regulation with a plus or minus of 2%, which again is way above the Intel specification for ATX. Also, it tells you the wattages on each rail there. So we've got a dedicated 12 volt rail with at least 
a thousand watts on there. When I say at least a thousand watts, there is a reason for that. I'll tell you more about that shortly. And you've got 120 watts on the combined 3.3 and 5 volt rails. Now, when I say about the thousand watts, so because the power supply and how it works and the technology within it, it's actually designed to handle power excursions, which if you've heard anything about modern graphics cards and some processors, they do have a tendency to peak way over what they're actually supposed to use in terms of TDPs and wattages. So this actually can sustain a complete two times load of the total wattage. So this is a thousand watt power supply, so a full system overload of up to 2000 watts it can handle as an excursion, which is excellent. So that is without tripping or powering off or shutting down or doing any of that weird stuff. When it comes to the graphics card side of things, because of the new specifications, this can handle up to a three times GPU excursion. So in the instance of this power supply, this is rated for 600 watts on that new star high power 600 watt connector. So for a very, very short time, it can handle up to 1800 watts on that rail. So yeah, that's pretty spectacular. So regardless of what you're putting in here, you're not gonna have any issues with your system just spiking momentarily. This is designed to cope with that. So actually opening up the box, I'm looking at what we get inside. The uh, thermal tape, don't let us down here. It's one of the very cool things, I do like this. It's very niche type thing, I guess, but the power supply comes with a nice sleeve on it. So you take off the protective sleeve and voila, you have your minuscule power supply, which I still, I don't get it. You also get included the SFX to ATX adapter there. So if you want to put this into an ATX style case, maybe something like the Tower 200, you can put it in there, no problems at all. That will fit absolutely nicely. You also get possibly the cutest bag of spare cables. So this is, uh, again, the Thermal Take bag logo on there. Very nice indeed. You get some cable ties and some additional screws to cable manage, that sort of stuff. You also get the user guide telling you about the power supply cables that you should be included, etc. And also there is the warranty guide information should you wish to bore yourself to death and have a read of that. So now let's take a look at the power supply itself, which you've probably seen on loads of B-roll already. Uh, things that I like about this already, the fact that the actual ventilation of the design, really, really nice open kind of elongated circles there or rectangles which are curved. I don't know how you'd describe that. Very, very open indeed. We like that a lot, uh, meaning the airflow can get in there. Being that this is smaller, obviously there has to be things uh, done right to keep things nice and cool in there. Also, there is a 90 mil fluid dynamic bearing in there, which is extremely low noise. I have had it run in. I have actually heard the fan run in. Basically, you don't know it's on. It's a very high quality premium product, which is nice to see because there has been issues in the past where power supplies have had slightly, um, well, not the best fans. And sometimes they can make a little bit of noise. So that's nice that this is essentially silent. And again, with the 1000 watt one, if you're under 30% of the load of the complete power supply, so 300 watts or so, the fan will not move. On the back, more ventilation. You've got a really nice, actually, I know it's a really sad thing to say, but power switches, there's something about a really nice quality power switch, which you know is gonna stand the test of time. This feels really premium, which is unusual for a switch. Normally they, they feel okay, but this one actually does feel great. And of course, you've got your power input on the side there. Six screw holes for the SFX type mounting system. Again, you can use your brackets, put it in ATX. On the sides, if this is going to be visible in your little form factor build, then you've got the logos on the side, so you can see what the power supply is, and depending which way up you have it, it should show the right way, although in SFX builds, they don't always mount in the normal way, so potentially that might not be the case. On the back, we've got the Tough Power SFX 1000 badge on there. It tells you all the voltages, watches, etc. Again, 1000 watts, or 83.3 amps on that 12 volt rail. Now I have taken this apart and had a look inside. I uh, couldn't get a very good look at the caps on there and I'm not really qualified to do so. So I've taken as best pictures I can. We can see that the primary caps on there are 100% Rubicon caps, 105 Cs. And from what I can tell, the rest of them seem to be as well. Again, take that with a slight pinch of salt. I do not have the uh, ability or the knowledge to 100% validate that. But what I do know is they are 100% Japanese caps and it does appear that they are Rubicon. So next up, let's take a look at the cables which are included. Now, something to warn you, obviously this is an SFX power supply, so it is designed for those smaller builds. So if you are planning to maybe put this into an ATX full tower case, 
you're probably going to be looking at cable extensions because these are a little bit on the shorter side. For those of you that are looking at this specifically for an SFX build, you're going to love this because there's less cable to have to manage because they are all reduced sizes. So our first one, which is the main 24 pin power connector, this one is 300 mils in length, so 12 inches. So yeah, nice and compact. That is about 100 mil or um, about four or five inches shorter than a standard ATX one. Next up, we've got our EPS cables. So these are the CPU additional power, so 12 volt EPS, a four or eight pin, both of which are able to be split and they are individual cables. So you don't have one of those kind of piggyback connectors on there. So these are gonna deliver the, uh, the raw power required. And if you wanna use just a four pin, you can just detach those very easily. Next, we've got our PCI Express or um, legacy connectors, as I guess we'll be calling them very shortly. So this is the six plus two or eight pin PCI Express connections, which just clasped together. These do have piggybacks on them. So if you do have a graphics card that maybe has three of the eight pins, then you will need to do a piggyback on at least one of them because there are only two of these cables included, uh, which actually is a little bit of a shame. I would like to have seen an additional cable but it does kind of make sense because actually on the power supply itself, when we take a look at the connections, which we will do shortly, you can, you can kind of work out why that is. But realistically, yeah, two lots of eight pin if you go native or if you want to add on the extra, you can piggyback them. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you can actually substitute them from your Molex connectors because there are peripheral cables, which we'll take a look at next. Next, we'll take a look at the SATA cables. Now, I don't actually quite understand this because this is an SFX power supply, traditionally SFX power supplies go into smaller PCs, ITX, etc. but maybe you're building some sort of server or NAS device, I don't know. But anyway, they've included eight SATA connections. So you've got two cables, each of which have got four SATA cables on, or SATA connections on, I should say rather, uh, 150 mil gap between each one, and you've got uh, 300 mil from the first to the power supply. So yeah, Nice long cable, should you need it. And there are, as I said, there's two of those. So up to eight SATA devices can be connected. And the last one is our Molex connector. I know technically they're not Molex, but we'll go with that. And also they've added on, there is one, two, three, four Molex connections. And also there is the Berg connector or the floppy drive style connector. So this is actually used on some thermal take RGB modules. So if you want to, uh, Use those, you certainly can do, and again, Molex connectors. Also, if you wanted to, you want to convert a couple of Molex plugs into a PCIe 8 pin, you can do that, so make up that third pin, as I discussed earlier. These, again, same sort of deal, so you're looking at 300 mil between the power supply and the first connector, and then 150 between each additional plug. Next, we'll take a look at the 12 volt high power, or the 12 high power 2x6, or the 12 plus 4, whatever you want to call it, Essentially, this is PCI Express Gen 5.1. So this is the slightly revised version of the PCI Express Gen 5 connector. These I really like actually because it's actually quite a short cable, which is gonna be handy for your SFX builds. And also the cables that they've used, although they're a very good gauge quality, they've still got a little bit of flex to them. So if you are gonna be building one of those cases where you don't have a lot of room, which let's face it, is very typical of ITX and SFX type builds. So yeah, you can bend the cables around uh, relatively easily. So no weird sheathing on there to make them awkward to bend. So yeah, that's pretty nice. And this one comes in again at 400 mils in length, which is basically the same as most of the cables here. So now we're gonna take a look at the modular connections on the back of the power supply. And this will give you a good idea of why I was suggesting about using these adapters. Now I don't think, again, realistically, SFX power supply, ITX builds, it's unlikely that you're gonna be using a graphics card which uses three eight pin power connectors. It's just highly unlikely. There aren't that many of them on the market anyway. And the chances of fitting one in ITX box is, yeah, is, is very limited use, but potentially you might want to. So anyway, for the 24 pin main power connector, you've got two block connectors there at the top. Moving across to the side there, you've got your CPU or PCI Express. So you've got a block of four of those all together there at the end. So you can use those in any combination you want to. So you can use one as your CPU connector, EPS, use the other three for a graphics card if you wanted to, or alternatively, you can use two for CPU, two for EPS. Again, the choice is kind of up to you, whichever combinations you do. Although you are gonna be limited again because you have only got the two PCI Express eight pin cables included. So you may need to purchase an additional one. Should you have one of those kind of slightly oddball graphics cards, which does require three eight pin connectors, which again are quite rare these days. 
I think most people though will be heading over to this connection. So this is the 12 volt, the two by six or PCI Express Gen 5 or 5.1 uh, to be exact. So that is the new style graphics card connector. Again, that can hold up to or supply up to 600 watts of power, what it's suggested and can have excursions of up to three times that amount with this power supply. So yeah, pretty cool. And last of all, you've got three connections there for the SATA plugs or Molex or combinations thereof. So you can plug all of those in at the same time should you wish to and have eight SATA drives, four Molex devices and something connected through Bird Connector should you want to, should you have the room inside your little ITX build. So there we go, there is a quick tour and look at the Thermaltake Tough Power SFX 1000W fully modular PCI Express Gen 5.1 ATX 3.1 and SFX 4.1 Platinum power supply. This thing's nuts. The uh, the name actually takes up more to write on my notes board than the actual power supply itself. This thing is absolutely tiny. It really is tiny. It, it does blow my mind how much power they've managed to squeeze into such a tiny form factor. And again, it's one of those things, if you don't want the 1000 watt, you can go with the 750 or the 850. These will be effectively replacing the previous models that have been on the market of the Tough Power SFX Platinum 1000 watt, which were PCI Express Gen 5 and ATX 3.0, rather than being Gen 5.1 and ATX 3.1. So it's not been a uh, like a huge redesign in terms of the technology, just some slight refinements on there, and also, again, we've still got the seven year warranty, still fully modular design, and still actually quite decent prices. Now clearly, if you are looking at an SFX build and you need a thousand watts, then money isn't really one of those things which you're kind of like, mm, well, is it a budget power supply? Clearly, this isn't gonna be a budget power supply, but in terms of pricing, not as expensive as you'd think it would be for Platinum. I'll put links in the video description so you can check it out for yourselves. Uh, there'll also be links to Thermaltake's site so you can check out all the latest news there. And there may be some affiliated links as well from Amazon, all those kinds of good things. So if you want to help support the channel, pick up a power supply and uh, yeah, it all goes towards helping out the channel if you can. Otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. If you've got any comments or questions on this one, feel free to let us know in that comment section below. If you like this video, please smash the like button if you want to see more content of like this on a daily basis. Maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification that way you need to avoid future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.